Hey, this is a video I promised you earlier and it's DS1525 Plus performance tests. On this video, I'm gonna show you how to push the limits and maximize the speed on this NAS. What is the absolute maximum you can get out of this box? So you will be seeing me connecting this NAS directly through 10 gigabit port and do the tests that way. We will also do some hacking and install SSDs in there, even though Synology only allow their hard drives or their SSDs. So there'll be a little glimpse how to do it. We will also apply the same hack for NVMEs. So we are able to use third-party NVMEs that are faster than Synology. And we'll test how fast we can transfer data from one NVMe to another NVMe and onto the SSDs. We also test how quickly we can boot this NAS up and shut it down. We will set up RAID 5, RAID 10, RAID 6, I'll show you how fast it takes to rebuild RAID 5. I'll also show you which RAID is the fastest for data transfers. Then we also check how fast this USB port is. We'll transfer some data through USB to external NVMe. We will also test how fast we can transfer one gigabyte file remotely using Snorgy proxy service. And we will finish with some transcoding tests. I will show you, is it able to transcode 4K video using built-in photos up and also Plex up. Okay, let's have a look at those performance tests. Okay, on our first test, let's find out how long it takes to shut this NAS down. It's very important to have very quick shutdown times if you're running UPS. Some of the cheapest UPS only can last a minute or two, depending on how many devices you have hooked onto it. So there need to be enough time for the UPS to communicate with the NAS and shut it down safely before it runs out of power. Okay, let's shut it down and see how long it's going to take. And it took 15 seconds to shut this NAS down. Very good score. Okay, let's now power this NAS on and see how long it's going to take for SMB service to come alive so you can actually connect to the NAS and start transferring files and how long it takes to get into admin panel so you can start managing the NAS. Okay, let's push the button and find out how long it takes to boot this thing up. And for the admin panel to appear, it took only 63 seconds. For SMB service to come alive, 67 seconds. This is a very good score. Booting times are very important if you have a lot of people depending on the storage space. The quicker it boots, quicker they can start using it. Okay, our next test is RAID 5 test. How quickly it can build RAID 5 using 5 SSDs. So we're going to select all of our SSDs that we have in our hard drive base and start the building process. How long is it going to take? to actually build RAID 5. Obviously it's going to be quicker than hard drives, but we are doing SSD tests just for sake of testing. And it took 17 minutes, 39 seconds. That's a very good score for RAID 5 building. We will be comparing these performance numbers later on in the video with other NASes, so you can have a general idea, is this NAS faster than other NASes or slower? Okay, we have removed one drive from the RAID 5 array. I'm going to format that on the Windows machine so it's all wiped clean and put it back in and see how long it takes to rebuild the RAID. Rebuild times are very important, especially if you have one drive redundancy like RAID 5. If a second drive fails in RAID 5 setup, your data will be gone. With smaller drives and also faster CPU, you can rebuild that RAID much quicker than with bigger drives. So we will use Partition Manager to wipe all data clean on this drive. Then we put it back into a NAS and choose this drive as a replacement drive and start the rebuild process. How long it's going to take? And it took 28 minutes 54 seconds to rebuild RAID 5. As you can see, it takes longer to rebuild a RAID rather than build an initial RAID setup. So with RAID 5 set up in place, let's find out how fast this RAID 5 actually is for transferring files. On this test, I will upload 19 gigabyte of files in a single folder to this NAS while it's connected through 10 gigabit switch that comes out with 10 gigabit connection to APC. And you can see the speeds are reaching around 500, 600, and sometimes even 700 megabytes a second. And on this test, we're gonna download 19 gigabyte file. And the speeds are also 700, sometimes even 800 megabytes a second. And it's around 30 seconds to do that. Let's connect this NAS directly without the switch and see if there's a speed difference. So let's download 19 GB file again while connected directly. And it took 32 seconds to download it. Let's upload this 19 GB file directly, see how long it's going to take. And it takes 24 seconds. That's very fast upload speed. Now we are going to use NAS performance tester tool. How long it's going to take to upload 1500 megabyte file five times up and down. You can see average speed around 1000 megabytes a second, read and write. And it took 35 seconds to do these loops. 
We can also have a look at Blackmagic tests, what speeds we are getting. And it's around 800 megabytes read and write. With the different testing tools, you'll be getting different test results because they're using different file sizes. The sample files are simply different. Having a lot of small files will slow down the system and overall performance. Whereas with bigger files, you can achieve better speeds. Okay, let's move on to RAID 6 setup and see how fast it's going to be. So we are going to select all five SSDs that we have and build a RAID 6. And it took 26 minutes to build RAID 6. It's slightly slower than RAID 5, which took only 17 minutes. But RAID 6 has two drive redundancy and is more complicated RAID setup. So normally you would expect slightly slower speeds. So let's have a look at the NAS performance tester. How quickly can it transfer 1500 megabyte files a couple of times? And it took 40 seconds, slightly slower than RAID 5. Let's have a look at Blackmagic design tests, how fast it will perform. And you can see it's also slightly slower. So it's around 700 megabytes second write and 1000 megabytes second read. Let's upload 19 gigabyte file folder to RAID 6. How long it's gonna take? And it's 34 seconds. Let's download the same folder and see how long it's gonna take to do that. And it took 36 seconds. Okay, that's enough with RAID 6 tests. Let's move on to RAID 10. We'll need to select four drives for RAID 10 setup because it's a mirror. This is usually the most popular choice among video editors. It's not as safe as RAID 6, but it's better than RAID 5. It has two drive redundancy. If one drive fails on one side of the mirror, another on the other side of the mirror. If two drives fail on the same side of the mirror, your data is gone. But usually this is the fastest RAID option. But you need to sacrifice half of your storage space. And you can see it was built in 60 seconds. This is a very simple RAID option. Just like RAID 1, RAID 10 takes seconds to set up. So let's test some speeds. How long it's going to take to upload 19 gigabyte file folder? And it took 33 seconds. Let's download this very same 19 gigabyte file. And it took 36 seconds. Let's do NAS performance tester. 1500 megabyte loops and you can see it's very close to 10 gigabit speeds up and down but not as fast as RAID 5. It took 38 seconds to complete that test. Let's do black magic test how fast it can go. So you can see it's around 800 megabytes a second write and 1100 megabytes a second read. Okay let's test USB speeds. Let's connect NVMe SSD and I'll be copying 19 gigabyte file from a NAS to this USB drive. And it took 34 seconds to complete. Let's copy this 19 gigabyte file from USB to RAID 10. And it took 37 seconds to do the reverse. Okay, now I want to find out how fast those NVMe slots are. Since Synology doesn't allow third party NVMe's to be used for storage space, we will need to apply a little bit of hacking. If you want to find out how to do this, I have a dedicated video on our channel. But either way, we will need to connect through SSH and run a command. You can get this script from GitHub. 007 Revad is uh, working on all sorts of scripts, so you can download it from his page. You can then use Terminal on your Mac or Linux or Putty app on your Windows. We go into sudo i admin mode, run the script, and all our hard drives or SSDs or NVMEs that are in this NAS that is not on the compatibility list will suddenly become compatible. So now we can create separate pools, volumes for each NVMe so we can test how fast we can transfer those files from one NVMe to another. So we will be copying 19 gigabyte file from USB to NVMe and it took 31 seconds to upload this file. Now we will copy this file from NVMe 1 to NVMe 2 and it took 37 seconds and speeds around 500 megabytes a second. And now we are going to copy this 19 gigabyte file from NVMe to RAID 10. And it's 46 seconds and around 500 megabytes a second. Let's do another test with RAID 10 to NVMe 1 and it took 28 seconds, 790 megabytes a second. So you never know what speeds you're actually going to be getting when you're copying from USB to NVMe and even from one NVMe to another NVMe. Very often Snowgy is also setting a bandwidth cap. What's the maximum speed you can achieve for each media type or each connection? So in this case, you can see RAID 10 to NVMe test was the fastest. Let's test the speed to NVMe 2 
and it's 31 seconds and it's also 700 800 megabytes second so it looks like both of those NVMe slots have the same speeds okay let's test a remote transfer speeds this is where Snorgy is probably the slowest compared to any other brand in the market obviously these speeds will be different if you're opening ports and setting up your direct connection from a NAS to a remote location so let's test how fast we can transfer one gigabyte file remotely using Synology Quick Connect service. And it took 21 minutes, 16 seconds to transfer one gigabyte file. It's pretty bad. Any other NAS brand out there will achieve better speeds than this. Unify took two minutes, 32 seconds, whereas Ugreen took two minutes, seven seconds to transfer this file. So it's a huge difference. So if you need to access your NAS remotely, maybe choose different brand unless you want to risk and set up port forwarding or tail scale. Okay, let's, okay, let's test transcoding, the most exciting part. As you know, Synology every year removes something from their services. So they removed video stations, so you can't watch videos remotely using their own app. You need to pay for third-party services to do that. And they also removed transcoding feature lately, so you cannot access your 4K files or any video files remotely. You need to be at home or in office while connecting to your NAS. And also they've been changing their CPUs. So they're doing everything to stop people using these NASes for multimedia or even surveillance if you want to connect remotely. You need to buy their DVA series with dedicated GPU inside or a CPU with a transcoding chip. So let's have a look how long it's going to take to watch one minute 4K video. Should be one minute. But with Synology, it takes 40 minutes to watch one minute video there will be constant buffering because there is no transcoding chip on the CPU and there isn't even any dedicated video app on Synology. So a horrible experience if you want to watch 4K videos or any videos remotely. Okay, let's install Plex and pay for the Plex transcoding feature and see how that will perform. Let's try and watch this 4K video file which is one minute long and you can see CPU is not liking it. Even on Plex the 4K videos are not playing nicely remotely. This is because this model is using Ryzen a CPU, which is not for multimedia. Let's try and give it something easier like 1080p video instead of 4K. But even then you can see that CPU is maxing out and is not doing a good job. So this concludes the video. And what we come to conclusion is that this NAS can achieve full 10 gigabit speeds. The fastest media in this NAS is gonna be your hard drive base using SSDs not NVMEs. We also learned a lesson that you need to use this NAS internally in your office or home. Connecting to it remotely is going to be a very slow and painful process if you want to stream videos or transfer some files. So when we put all test results together in the table, we can see the total score is 1 hour 52 minutes 56 seconds. It's much slower compared to DS1522+, Plus, which is the previous model in their series. So you're probably better off with the older unit than the new one. So we also learned that the best performing RAID is RAID 5 on this NAS. USB is limited to 500 megabytes a second. And we also learned that NVMe speeds are somewhere around 700 megabytes a second. So if you want to use those NVMe's for storage space, do know what the speed limitations are. Is not what they advertise on the spec sheet. So I hope this gives you an idea how fast DS1525 Plus is what you can expect from it and what you cannot. If there are any tests that I missed out on, do let me know. If you have any suggestions what to test in the future, also let me know. Otherwise, I hope this video helped you to decide if this NAS is for you or you should get a previous model or entirely different brand or maybe entirely different brand altogether. Thank you for watching and see you next time.